Yeah. Uh, so the buy and born, uh, basically 21% exactly of the fees will be used. And the fees will be 0.29% um, instead of the 0.3%. So a little bit cheaper than Uniswap charges. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, you want to go into like how the how the buy and burn works, the math behind it, all that. All right, um, you guys are really like eager for the buy and burn. Um, <laughs> so, first off, calculating liquidity pools is how I burnt the built the model for PulseX. So, at first off, like what is going to happen in a liquidity pool, and the math is pretty simple. You need a K value, a constant that does not change. It's the multiplication of the two sides of the pair, X and Y. And then you can divide one side of the pair by the other to get the price. So two side, one side divided by the other is the price. One side multiplied by the other is the K value. This is how you build a liquidity pool in Excel, and you can have these interdependently linked. So playing around with it at first... Um, I was able to realize impermanent loss and impermanent gains. So let's say that the starting value of the asset is one hundredth of a cent. I decide to put $10,000 worth of USDC and $10,000 worth of the asset into the liquidity pool. Now, if the price suddenly spikes to $1, well, that pulse where I had put 100,000 tokens that were only worth 10,000 or sorry, am I doing that math right? Yeah. So you see the liquidity pool on one side has to get divided by 100 and the other side multiplied by 100 to balance. But now I only have, instead of 100 million pulse tokens, I only have 1 million pulse tokens. So although I have $1 million worth of pulse, providing liquidity through that entire 10x. Um, I lost $99 million in impermanent loss, basically. Well, $98 in impermanent loss is the number that I have showing here. And that's the idea of you need to be able to making be making the amount of fees and have the high volatility in the liquidity pool to be able to gain it. So there is a lot of thought that goes into this. And then that's stable coin to asset. So I also built a math model for asset to asset, which is available on how to pulse. But you guys are drooling over the pulse X math. Um, before, still, before we hit the buy and burn math. So you guys have basically farming liquidity and then the pools, because there is some uh, debate about the party token. So the party token, which is gone now, was a placeholder the idea is if pulse had launched soon enough that projects like hedron and maxi if they wanted to do free airdrops they could put pools up for vote in a dow and so crappy projects or dust attacks don't make it in but projects that pass uh, the public's vote and confidence get in through the dow they can be airdropped to anyone that stakes. And you get to choose how much Pulse X you want to put into which pool when they start becoming available. And that is how the single-sided staking works. So can you, can you just, uh, cause I didn't know that the party token was uh, gone either. So why, why is it gone? Like, it, is it supposed to be one token? Is it supposed to be up to community no. tokens? So like Party token was not supposed to be a real token. It was literally a placeholder to prove functionality that any real token that was came and be developed could be handed out to PulseX stakers through this single-sided staking pool. Okay. So it's a placeholder just to... So, so why is it gone now? Like, why isn't it there well, until mainnet, for example? So it was up there as an example, and as the example, the placeholder token was only queued to run for, I think, four weeks, maybe six. And it's the idea that the pools will become available for limited time. So you'll have to hop in out of them, constantly hop into new pools, get different yield as different things come up. And because it's just testnet, the devs could be making more play tokens that aren't worth a single penny, or they could be busy building in Goldland. 
So they've been busy building on Golan and they haven't been updating Paul Sex because they didn't expect to be rewriting the whole code, right? They they thought they were going to go right from this version into mainnet. Um, so yeah. by the time this ended, basically there was a bit of a hunch that maybe that's about the time they were expecting to launch and things started to kind of change and go sideways. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can you just explain this one more time too for, for, for those listening? Like why is, yep. why is the third party token gone? Will it come back or will there be, uh, you know, what would it look like in mainnet? I guess is the question. So in mainnet, there will be no party token. It was just a made up token as a proof of concept to show how the staking works. So in mainnet, when it launches, say any new project that wants to hand out uh, free tokens, like I've taken some free airdrops. Like if you have a hex stake, you can go mint Edron for free. So if you stake in the Pulse X pool, you can claim any number of airdrops, but you get to choose your airdrops basically by participating in these pools instead of the airdrops choosing you, if that makes mm. any sense. So there'll be tokens available for short periods of time. You'll have chances to participate. And then when they're done, collect your rewards and move on to a new pool. And that I think is the idea of the, the, the single side of staking pools. It keeps Paul sex off the market because you can still collect and play in new tokens. And then you can go dump those new tokens if you don't like them. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and do you think it'll be a range of different tokens or will it be like new community tokens? Of like, Oh, here's, here's new dog token. You want to earn this? Cause we have this, we're starting this new community or will it be like, yeah, here's Hedron, you know, things like that. That's where it's up to a little bit of imagination. Like I'm pretty sure the Hedron contract is already locked directly to hex stakes, but new projects, definitely this would be a great place to give out to people that you know are good at holding crypto and make value go up. So this might be where you want to try and attract new community members, giving stuff out for free. I think that's the idea of this uh, to really go. Um, so, I mean, it's not as much for pro projects that are already up and running um, as much as new projects that are available to come. Gotcha. gotcha. All right. Yeah, please continue. Yeah. No problem. No problem. So that is uh, the two types of yield that are basically available from Paul Sachs, the single side of staking and the double side of liquidity providing. So between these two pools, yeah, that's the, the main function earn. Um, but then funny enough, so Uniswap does amazing amounts of business per day and per year when you look at this stuff. So, I mean, the um wow so the uh this isn't so this amount yeah 1.9 billion dollars in volume per day some days at least when it was spiking i haven't done a look recently to see what it's at um but when you break that through the 29 percent and the 21 percent or sorry 0 0.29 21 percent you start to get some cool effects of exactly how much buy pressure can be generated um, month over month and year over year with Paul Sex's buy and burn. So basically, this can't be completely automated for a simple reason is sandwich attacks. If you know exactly what block height that the program is going to execute, you can get around it and play with price and game the system. And there's other ways to, to slow down transactions at time, all sorts of games that can be played if it's completely automated. So they were able to make it mostly automated and just basically had to give it, uh, basically just had to give it um, a free pellet button. So, hey, um, you want some free money? You bored? Well, you can come click on an asset, connect your wallet, click burn, Ugh. and the wallet will make you sign in and click on gas and confirm gas. I always forget about this. I'm like, oh, it's super easy. Oh, yeah, a couple more clicks. Of course, my computer's going to lag right now. It's being cute. <laughs> this is great for a live stream. Yes, show the functionality of testnet. <laughs> this is how it actually works, folks. This is how it actually works. Burn. 
So why do you need to hit the burn button? Like, why isn't that automated? Like, what is the kind well, of gamification behind that? Yeah, so, I mean, if this was completely automated, it would have to be programmed with a specific time that it executes in specific amounts, which means um, in the lovely land of crypto, there are various different attacks. One of my least favorite is the sandwich attack. So what a sandwich attack is, is basically, uh, hey, I just spent minimum gas and I just dropped $10,000 to buy a token. And literally a, an arbitrage style contract sees this execute and wait in queue. And then it's able to spend, say, another... Uh, yeah, able to spend another uh, extra little bit of gas so it can get ahead of you in queue. And then it executes a buy directly before yours, a larger one, which bumps the price of the asset way up on you so you get less. And then as soon as your transaction is complete, it dumps everything it just bought at the higher price you just put it at, dumping you under the system, basically using you as instant exit liquidity. So things like this in the programming world are easy to kind of set up and work around if you have a very predictable system. So mm -hmm. if you take away computer automation and you just pay people a very small portion to click the buy button for you, well, now it's completely randomized. And sometimes the simplest solution is the most elegant. Okay. So that is why they threw in the button for the buy and burn, which once you've connected your wallet and paid for gas should execute properly. I had it working on my video last night. And then everyone always gets really curious about what the effects of the buy and burn can be. So mm -hmm. I added a new variable to my model of adoption year over year, month over month. So my model worked on some pretty simple premises to start with. Uh, I had a hex size liquidity. Um, I had a bullish reading of what Uniswap does. And I'm like, well, Uniswap has 1.5 million users. We had 140,000 people sacrifice. We've got roughly 10% already. So that was my baseline bullish reading for it. And then Testnet came along and I had to start scaling my LP size because it got larger. Mm. And then it got larger and you can see it starts to slow down the amount it'll be worth green field below it so and then it got insanely large and i didn't make a lot of videos because i was like oh this just shot it completely in the foot ouch i'm like but people won't provide liquidity like this on mainnet but how do i show that math and i mean there's reasons it matter but i hadn't really gotten through so i let it sit on a back corner until don was talking to me yeah, uh, this weekend and he knocked it loose and I had a Eureka moment. Luckily I didn't run naked hmm. through the streets, but I realized I could add some uh, other uh, modifiers other than scaling the LP size and, and how much business it's doing to Uniswap on a straight line. I realized, Oh, I can add adoption. And so I found out some fun facts where Don was throwing out that, Crypto adopts at 115% a year, and that's compound, which is to say that each year, the amount of people using crypto is 215% of what it was the year before, plus 115%. So the original adoption rate of the internet was 76%, which in my math model would look like 176 to properly run through. Um, so a good crypto should be able to adopt at at least 15% a year. And that's where I can come up with a minimum guideline. And then I realize I can throw an S curve in when I threw in this adoption. Mm. So uh, basically I set the one year mark for it to be completely at the full 10% mark that I threw. So there's uh, no exponent modifier on my equation at that point. And then from there, I start dividing it by a small number and then a slightly larger number until uh, back in month one, it's divided by 10. But 5, 10, like it slowly doubles up to this. So it creates a curve where the idea is, okay, 140 people, thousand 
people sacked. Maybe a lot of people got busy with their lives. Maybe people aren't aware, you know, when it's going to launch right away. So maybe it's only got 15,000 the first month and 30 the second and 50 the third and then scaled up to 90% usage after six months and then gets all the way to the 150 after a year. It's just a way for me to look at one S curve. Then mm -hmm. I kind of laid in a double S curve in adoption going through the years. So it scales up all of a sudden towards year five, like a Fibonacci raise. And then I have it slowly balanced back out. So year 10 is at a 10 year exponent. And I do the same again towards 20 years. So it creates a nice little S curve adoption forecast in the model. And so now just with 15% adoption still on test net drunken numbers at 10% scaling. Well, the five year isn't that insane. 49 X. I mean, that's better than a mutual fund or a RRSP, but we're looking at, and I'm not a financial advisor. I have no fiduciary responsibility. So, uh, yeah, we're looking at, sorry, a 165 X in 10 years and a 2,200 X in 20 years with the automated buy working. And you can see just a little bit of an S in the graph, but this is me playing really, really conservative with it because uh, yeah. realistically, um, I think we're going to see a little bit more adoption for the cheapest, most liquid DEX that is going to hit this, uh, hit this ecosystem. So let's just even crank it up to 25% adoption. And it doesn't affect the first year so much because of the way the division hides that into the equation. But overall, suddenly we're at a 71x over five years. This is without anyone buying or selling in the system. This is just the automated buy pressure of the Pulse X buy and burn whale. Think of it like a whale in the system that you can poke with a stick and make it buy your favorite asset anytime you feel like it. And it'll pay you for doing that. So this thing is capable of putting this much buy pressure into the system as it's being used, not as people are buying Paul sex, but as people are using the swap. So um, really, I mean, for this is where for the sake of things, I really think the anticipation between uh, of Paul sex that we're going to start in the first month at our 150,000 that I've been drooling and waiting for. And we're more likely to see the same as Uniswap by the end of a year of 1.5 million users. That's how bullish I am. And I really think that this crypto rate could adopt at 150%, uh, which is a 50% adoption rate. That's still slower than the internet would adopt. Oh, and all of this fun has been under the giant weighted pool of the anchor. That is the test net liquidity. I have a hunch that there'll be a lot less liquidity on the real system. So just with these numbers and reducing the liquidity back to a smaller size like hex, which we know Richard Hart likes, that brings us back to, oh my dolly gee, five years and uh, how many X's? No way. No way. A $100 investment couldn't be $36 million in five years with that kind of buy pressure. Wait, what? Ooh, that's the moon math. That's the moon math. That's the, like, I, this is just, this is still adopting slower than the internet did uh, as a good crypto. And just how, like, will it be replaced in 10 years? Will it turn into eight track like Bitcoin? Will there be a fancier, shinier toy? Maybe technology mm. keeps spinning. So that's why I break it down into these various models because maybe it'll never get there because adoption will start waning to something else. But wow, this is a beast because this still isn't even cranked to beast mode. <laughs> so uh, yeah. yeah, there's there's higher settings on this. And that means the more that we see adoption of Paul Sachs and the more people use it and are custodially or have uh, non-custodial wallet, wallets as they're in control of their own assets swapping on decentralized exchanges, the more potent this becomes. And then the question is, yes, there are lots of people that got in early and they're going to want to sell out. But when they do, the system eats it up. I can even show you what it looks like. Let's say right away in one, one, let's do one trillion, one trillion tokens get dumped. That's one billion, one trillion out of the 17 tokens get dumped in month one what did that do the price 
oh, in five years, instead of 36 million, it's only 35 million. Wait, yeah, um, that was 5% of the supply just got nuked in the buy and burn, and it shrugged off a million dollars over five years. For my next trick, you want to see that happen when we get to one tenth of a cent? Suddenly, people want to take profit again. We drop another trillion coins into the market, and oh, we're still at thirty-five million dollars and some change. And we've just dumped over ten percent of the supply into the buying burn and never come back again. 